Well, it's Wednesday again. Everybody's favorite day of the week. First of all, I, I'll start off by addressing last week's video, which was Shane Brewshaw and Incredible Dialogue. Um, actually, I said that my favorite song was one by Nickelback, though I did provide a list of several other artists that I also adore um, just below. Basically, the reason I picked that Nickelback song was um, because I've just gotten a call from one of my friends who's gone off to a different university. It's the first time I've heard from him in about, I don't know, about two months, to be honest. So I was in an incredibly sentimental mood. The Silver Lining of Today is one that can be applied to every Wednesday, but especially today because I was, just, was not in the mood to deal with him. So the Silver Lining of Today is that I didn't have to see Film Jack at all. Okay, so I should probably explain this very blatant change in clothing. Um, basically, what you saw before was what I filmed before going to university. So I filmed it this morning. Since then, I've had a shower. I've been to university. I got off an hour early, which is another silver lining on my day. And I'm actually filming this just before getting ready for a driving lesson, which is bound to be chock full of hilarious adventures and nearly killing people because that's what I'm like on the road. The theme of this week is firsts and like Viv and Adam I've decided to go with the alphabet idea. So um, Adam left off on on K I think so I'm beginning with L and rather than just doing five letters because that would leave Andy with far too many um, I'm actually going up to well, my first sort of childish love was a boy who lived in my close, um, because I live in a close, which is a sort of circular street rather than a long street. Um, so a boy who lived in my close, his name was Kyle. He was about three years older than me, and um, in many ways he was the first best friend I ever had, and. I did absolutely adore him. My first machine was actually a Game Boy, not the colour version, but the ordinary original black and white one. Um, then I got the Game Boy Colour and then the Game Boy Advance. So Game Boy was quite a big part of my childhood, I suppose. Um, and I actually have my Game Boy Colour here, and in it is Pokemon Red, because I was playing that a few days ago. I do remember the first book that one of my teachers ever gave me to read outside of class and that was year five and <laughs> my teacher gave me To Kill a Mockingbird. I absolutely hated it. Um, year five, I would have been ten. That's definitely a bit too advanced. <laughs> but um, the first time I realised that maybe I was a bit odd was year... Actually it was probably year five as well. So same time period as my first novel. Um, it was actually when everyone else had an imaginary friend and I didn't. I was just sort of happy with my books and everyone else was walking around talking into the watches like they were spies <laughs> and going, oh no, I'm, I'm talking to my friend. You wouldn't understand, you've got your book. <laughs> so yes, I felt very lonely because I didn't have an imaginary friend and that might have in some way contributed to the challenge I gave to Adam, which by the way I loved. TV program um, that I can never remember singing was the, the X-Men animated series, which once you understand this might help you to understand why I'm quite obsessed with it. Because it is actually in many ways the first clear memory that I have. Um, just the opening sequence of um, the X-Men 90s cartoon. Q was a really hard one, so I went for Quarrel. Um, Quarrel, the first Quarrel I remember was with my brother because we spent a lot of our childhood together, and during that time we both enjoyed watching the sort of WWF hype wrestling, which was very sort of dramatised and with a lot of flair. And, we both absolutely adored it. We thought it was hilarious. Um, we were a bit twisted, I suppose. So he used to try 
to practice his wrestling moves on me, and I was quite young, I was only about six, and I didn't really appreciate having my arms bent up behind my back, so that led to a lot of intense arguments that sort of ended with me face down on the floor and him pretty much sitting on me. <laughs> the first roleplay character I had that you will absolutely recognise was Kia Brightstar, which is where my username for quite a lot of things comes in, Captain Kia. Um, she was a Gryffindor, she was quite quite happy and bubbly and very mis very mischievous and <laughs> incredibly annoying to be honest. I was posting leaflets for my aunt's dance company um, because I was quite an avid dancer back in the day and in my free time I do her chores of advertising and basically what happened was it was one of these really stiff leather boxes in the door um, so you had to really push the paper through and there was a dog there and he didn't want to let go of my hand. So I I was about seven at the time maybe and I'm just standing there with my hand in a letterbox box screaming my head off. <laughs> so that was the first time I ever got stitches as well because the dog had ripped my things open down to the bone and my index and middle finger on my right hand. Coming to us from Liv and it came in two parts really. Um, the first part was who pick my favourite roleplay character ever. And I'm presuming that she meant mine because making a decision about my, everyone else's would be far too hard. I don't know, I'm, I'm really enjoying writing the Lennoxes, that's, that's for sure, because they're the closest I've ever gotten to like the sort of stereotypical manipulative cold sliver. And Damien doesn't really pull that up too well, but Colin, Colin's really good at it, and it's actually quite funny because underneath, she's actually not supposed to be that cold and manipulative, it's just a front, really, and I don't think anyone will ever actually managed to break through it, but it would be really funny if they did, because writing this sort of soft, fluffy, I, I so love you, Colin. Hysterical, so someone please make her fall in love with <laughs> They're not what they appear to be, really. I mean, you just. When reading their bios, I suppose in a way you can pick up on that because he does give a hint that Colin isn't just this sort of manipulative bitch, I suppose. I told myself I wouldn't spell on YouTube, but there you go. Um, and Damien is always the playful, teasing character that you feel like. I I am actually looking forward to exploring that sort of darker side to him. So yeah, that's why he's signed up to be in the chosen. I mean the in character reasons why it is that Colin sort of bullied him into it, which you will be seeing a lot more of Colin's manipulative side. But um yeah, I just want to explore his darker side, that's why he's being all evil with Stephen and Carlin. The other half of the challenge that Liv sent me was to decide upon my favourite roleplay pairing ever. And I don't have one. <laughs> because I am so indecisive and this was a really, really mean challenge for someone like me. I mean, you can see that I'm already wringing my hands over it. Because that's what I do when I get upset or frustrated or have to make a decision. I just start wringing my hands like someone in an old book. I'm going to say Indian and Dre. Stephen and Dean, or Kaylin and Laura, because they are just love, all of them. I mean, some of them are twisted love, <laughs> but I just, I love them. I, I love writing Kaylin, and I love reading everyone else. I don't know, I'm also getting very fond of Damien and Eli, and I'm running out of time. I don't know, I'm not making a decision. <laughs> Andy, I'll see you on Friday. I've just had to interrupt filming basically a prank call. I'm not very happy. <laughs> I was like, hello? You know, I can do this with him. I was like, hello? And he was like, in your fridge, morning. <laughs>